And this morning, uh, as we wake up and we start the day fresh and put on a new set of clothes, you choose to wear a shirt with hot dogs and octopuses. It's a wienermobile, sir. And it's a squid, if we're being technical. It's okay. It's it's a, you know, it's a layered, nuanced reference. What Will's doing here is me calling him out as a nerd, him saying, oh no, let me show you nerd. Um, where I, I went with a classic banded collar look here. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, look, the which, banded collar is nice. You look like a business guy. That's fine. Which if you've seen aliens three, um, what's his face has his suit as a banded collar mm-hmm. and growing up, um, as a young teen at that time, I then went to the thrift store, bought a bunch of suits and banded all my collars and went around like what's it, Paul Reiser or whoever that was. You, uh, wait, you emulated Paul Reiser from aliens. He was the bad guy, man. Yes! The aliens weren't the bad guy in Aliens. It was Paul Reiser, the mad about you guy. Nice job, Chad. Um, but It was a look. But it's been, uh, we, we're burying the lead here. We, the game's out. We, yes. We haven't talked to you all since the game was out. We meant we meant, we meant, meant to do these, um, keep doing these every week. And then the game came out and we were so excited. And we were playing with the community and hanging out and just hot um, fixing, getting all the data in and is crazy. So in one week. Yeah, one week's time. Our tiny little indie team of twenty people, um, over two hundred thousand people have played the game. Mm-hmm. We're uh, actually the... coming up on two weeks now. Just it's time has gone very fast. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's that's an amazing response for a game as small as ours to get that much uh, attention early. Um, game Pass Xbox has been just amazing. Steam's been great. Um, and so it has just been fantastic to watch all those players work together. Um, in the beginning, I think people in the discord, if they were looking for a game would call out. So we have matchmaking, but you can also mm-hmm. go to our discord, discord.gg slash Bay, and hook up with people who are looking for games. And people first started would call out which platform they're on and then quickly realize, oh, we don't need to do that. Cross play just works and it doesn't matter. We can all just be friends playing a game together. And well, it's one of our goals. So it, it's working amazingly well. Yeah. The, the matchmaking cues, if you're in there without a friend, it pops pretty quickly. There's like... As with, I think, any game launch, we put the game out there and then we immediately realized a bazillion things that we need to fix. Um, we started out by hot fixing a bunch of server perf stuff and and we're coming up on uh, a patch that will help console perf uh, like an incredible amount. It is a, a night and day difference, I am told, um, in the before and after. on, on if you, So if you had problems with the Xbox Series consoles, especially at 4K, then you'll get a much, much smoother 60 frames per second after... Uh, the next patch that will come up hopefully yes. later this week or early next week. Um, it, you know, and with that feedback loop, um, giving us feedback, negative or positive, is always amazingly great. So if you're comfortable with it, you can go to discord.gg slash Bay and there's a place to give feedback there. If you're not comfortable with that, um, my email is just chet at straybombay.com. Shoot me an email. Um, mm-hmm. We've been having people just shooting us email telling me how much fun they've been having. And, you know, those are great. And also when there's an interesting edge case or bug that we haven't realized about we can follow up we can get logs we can go with them right like we are dedicated to fixing out and improving the game we already have released one hot patch that fixed a bunch of stuff Mm -hmm. um we've got some other stuff going on and then also um not only just feedback because there's like there's some things that are clear or or they're they're helpful conversations but also like what would you like to see kind of conversation so like a brown matchmaking we are a social game we're not a skill-based game so we're not gonna have elo matchmaking we want to have a different kind of matchmaking. So we're actually going to start um, playing around with that. Like in Discord now, you can go in and be like, hey, I'm going to looking for a game and I want to do this things and people can match up with you and you'll see a bunch of people jump in. But I also want to have like, hey, I'm a new player. Anyone want to help me learn the game? Or hey, I want to I want to do this challenge. Like there's this really hard challenge. There's this challenge called the Marathoner where it's all the episodes in a row. And if you wipe once, you have to start again. Back to now the Will beginning. and his team failed. Yeah, we failed. It was embarrassing. My team, on the other hand, of just random strangers off the internet, I was able to rally together. People you've been Will's playing with team, for two years. Yes. Not only did we complete it, but in the end of episode two, when you get the alien tech, we actually carried it all the way through episode three as well and finished the game with the alien tech intact. That's impressive. Um, I think yeah, the that real, was also fun. The real super challenge there, though, is to carry the data card from the first one all the way through. Which yeah, means we, one person we, has to not shoot after the end of the first episode, I believe. Yeah, we 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 made a mistake there and did not um did not do that. That's okay. That's okay. I mean, but get so, at least something for the for the for the players is, is yes, what But we have um weekly challenges still coming. I think one of the other things we've always talked about wanting 
is more of a chill mode. And that is just, hey, our game's always been made to be social. I think that's one of Left 4 Dead's strong points is you know how to play it. You don't die in it. It's just you're hanging out with your friends. It's challenging, but it's a fun challenge. And you're just laughing and having a good time. Right now, our game pushes the intensity up a bit and then down. It's not trying to kill you. It's just trying to give you an intense time. And so we've talked about having some kind of chill mode. Chill. We don't want to have a derogatory name. So man, if you have a name, because we hate naming things. Because like you don't want to be like like real man, he-man mode and little girl mode. Yeah, we're uh, not like, going to call it baby ass baby mode or anything like that. But. Yeah, so chill is the kind of the mode that I like because often games when you play them aren't, you're not expressing difficulty or, or mastery. Instead, you're just having fun. You're playing, yeah. right? There's a really good talk by Robert Heineke uh, and her cohort, who I forget his name at the moment, sorry, uh, about seven ty- types of fun. And in our game, we try to have more than just one type of fun of the difficulty challenge, right? And so we want to make sure players can enjoy that as well. Yeah, yeah it's um, it, it's it's interesting because like we've seen a lot of different kinds of players approach the game since it came out. Um, it's been really gratifying to watch streamers and to see people, like people are posting clips in the Discord, which is fabulous. Uh, like there, there are a couple of things that we realize really quickly, which is right now the game is definitely best played on voice with people who know how to play the game or, or, you know, ideally friends, right? Like people, you know, from, from your interactions online or the world or whatever. Um, and we're like, that's definitely something we're working on going forward, like aggressively. Um, but if you want to hop in the discord and get some awesome games, there's always people in that looking for group channel and, and you can get in there yes. and say, Hey, I just want to play episode two. I haven't been able to finish episode two yet. And you'll get three people in like 15 minutes and, and have a game ready to go. The, the voice chat's actually a really good example of something of how we approach the game is. So we, we started with it being muted for everybody. And that's because it's a vector for toxicity. And if you just have it on, People aren't paying attention that it's on, they're doing other things, they're eating, they're hanging out. Like there's just a lot of things going on. And so what we wanted to say was, hey, let's make it where they actively have to decide to turn the voice on. But what happened is most people aren't going through their UI and turning it on. So we're actually gonna now prompt players and let them know about it and then go from there. Yeah, we, I mean, in retrospect saying, hey, if you wanna turn on voice, here's how to do it, probably would have been a good idea. Um, but I mean, it, it, again, it, this is a small, we're a small team. We, we launched in early access because we specifically knew that we needed that, that we were going to have to need help from the, the audience to help sand some of the edges off of the game. Like that's, well, so that's also a good example though, of like, so, um, some things will take some time to do. That's just going to be the way it is. Like we understand, we, we love the feedback we've gotten it. Um, and we're working on it, but it's not going to be in this patch because one of the things we do with every single one of our patches is. We run it through a week of testing before it goes out. Yeah. Now, there may be a hot patch here or there that we don't do that on. We really, since we're cross-platform, we're trying to be very careful to not introduce bugs that only one of the groups get or something nefariously twisted inside of there. So we're actually spending some extra time um, really making sure that that's, we're trying to stamp those out with each of the patches or not introduce new things with patches. God knows I've worked on products where you release the, you release the patch, really got a hot fix it quickly. And then you're like, oh my God, what that hot fix just do? Um, and so we're trying to be really disciplined about that internally. And in fact, staffing up, got a new hire starting next week, um, just which is, will help expand out that QA role uh, in testing, so. Yeah, so, so to, to, like, to put some concrete examples here, it, the first hot fix we released fixed the way matchmaking worked, fixed a bug with matchmaking. And that was something that we felt confident in after doing a really light amount of testing, we were able to get it out as quickly as we possibly could. The follow-up was stuff that required more more time uh, for us to evaluate and test. It had um, it had some more server fixes and it had uh, some other minor UI stuff that we needed to spend more time on. And then the stuff that we're working on now is the stuff that we've had in iteration and testing for, in some cases, like 10 days at this point, 12 days, because we, we did that first hot fix and then a bunch of people moved over to working on the update two items uh yes which which are what we're starting to roll out in the next patch and then so also i don't think players may realize this but the, so how fixes often go is hey that's one line of code i can change that we should do that that doesn't mean that bug was a higher priority it means hey this is a really safe change we can fix this and we're confident in that yeah others are hey we know what we need to do we need to add this element we need to highlight this or hey how this affects working we need to just fix that bug but then others, and I'm going to use um, um, kicking as an example of like, 
if just adding that is actually in a four player game, a problematic thing. Well, the, well, 99% of the games we have are great. And you have, there's a lovely community on both uh, Xbox and game pass and PC. This does happen. And so how do you handle that? Well, it's really hard in a four player game where there's not large numbers. And this is why the juries are not four people or, uh, you know, you try to, you try to remove even numbers from things that you want decisions based on. So we have to think of other things and that becomes things like, well, if we just had private servers that would solve some of this inherently. So we should probably put some private servers above this, or is there something in the case of somebody being a bad actor, there's something we, we can put in place now, get feedback, understand how it's working, learn from it and go. And so we'll almost always try to put something in, like, what is the first step? Like you tease apart the problem. What is the first thing that we can put in? We can try, we can iterate on. And now, especially for these kind of things, it's really hard for us to test internally because um, we're all wonderful human beings. Um, and so it's just, it's just a harder thing to test. And so we will often just try to put things in. Um, but, you know, I've stressed this with the team a lot um, for the, for that kind of thing, we need to be careful about, I, I rate things as like, there's some changes we need to be very careful and safe about and have an understanding of what we're doing to the players. There's other things that we can do. Like we may make a weapon change where players are like, I don't like this. And that's okay. Cause we need to find those boundaries of, of where we're testing. If we just do small little incremental tests, you'll never understand. Am I moving to the right correctly or to the left? And so that becomes, there's this thing of, um, 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 you revert to the mean is what ends up happening. You end up, you end up, it's, it's like, it's like making, it's like the spaghetti sauce example from business books, right? Like, yeah, the, yeah. The, the ragu sp canned spaghetti sauce from the fifties is the average of what every person in America likes. And it ends up that nobody really particularly likes well, it. Yeah. So, and also there's, so there's, Sid Meier always has said, just double every change you make, meaning make the delta between the changes big enough that you never get lost. Yeah. And before I had ever heard him say that, I have this, this wonderful uncle who's since passed, Joe, who used to navigate across Lake Erie back in the 70s with just a sextant in the stars. And so when he would aim for a harbor, he would never aim at the harbor across the way because he's not going to see land for hours. Yeah. He would aim to the left of it or the west of it. Uh, and that way, when he hit land, he knew to go to the right to find the harbor. So, he, so was, he was airing in a predictable, easy to understand way. Yeah. And so as we introduce, we're going to introduce things like that, that are clearly gone too far. Like all of a sudden we're going to quadruple the grenades everyone has. That's too far. But how much fun and crazier is it having more grenades? Okay. Let's now get it back to the reasonable number. Same thing with, um, I think right now where we are with the um, grabber arms, grabber arms are really long, really, really long. And okay. We wanted to learn too. something. Like there, there's a bunch of things about the grabber that we want yes. to adjust at this point, I think is what I'm Yeah. Saying. So it also, yeah, it also instantly turns and fires doesn't have any like kind of yeah. and we want to add some of that to give players time to react. I'm going to send that one to the animators so they can just capture that. Yeah. Chat. I that think I, really I, I mo um, that, but so, so there's changes like that, that also then will be, you'll get them and you'll be like, what the hell? Why did they think this? And it's like, Hey, we're in early access. We want to be able to experiment with these kind of things and really have a better understanding. And so when we make those changes and you give us feedback, that's super positive. Um, like when people give us feedback about the matchmaking, it wasn't just, dude, this sucks. It was like, hey, here's the problems I'm having and here's the goal. It's always really great. Here's the goal. Here's what I want it to happen. Yeah. Because I like to jump into random games without strangers. And so, hey, if you hit quick play, guess what? It'll always find you an active game. It may find you a start in the lobby, but it may find you in an active game. And it works that way because of some feedback that we got. And so, again, ha give us feedback. Let us know how we're doing. Well, this is why we're doing early access. Well, and the, like the matchmaking thing is another good example because like there's there's a lot of nuance with matchmaking that you don't think about is like if I hit quick play, does that mean I want to go into a game that's already in progress? Do I want to jump in with somebody who's already at like episode three and had somebody drop or level three and had somebody drop out? Or does that mean I want to start at the beginning of any given episode? And, and we have to figure out how to kind of tease that out of the player so that people get the outcomes they're looking for without making a bazillion cues and making our matchmaking times get too long. Yes, because often in a meeting, so we'll have little we'll have little strike teams on different aspects of it. And it can be really small pieces, like just well, matchmaking isn't small, but like sometimes they're very small little pieces. And someone will, in the beginning of the meeting, say something and you, everyone will be like, yeah, that's so obvious we should go that way. And by the end of the meeting, we're like, oh my God, that would have had all these unintended consequences and would have been the worst choice we ever could have made. Let's not do that. <laughs> Well, there, and there's one other kind of bug that we haven't talked about yet, which is the one that like the camera bug where you would get squinched down and low and you couldn't look up and down, um, 
we knew that it existed from internal testing, but it was a very low percentage uh, in our internal testing, and we weren't able to get a good reproduction on it. We weren't able to re reproduce it reliably. The good news is when a couple hundred thousand people start playing the game, all of a sudden a low reproduction rate bug, uh, we get hundreds and hundreds of people submitting what they did. And, and we were able to figure out, oh, okay, there's one repro that's pretty reliable where you where people press two inputs on a controller, two inputs on on a on a on the mouse, and and that causes that to happen. That one's fixed. That we're gonna that one's that one's taken care of. Now we're down to the sub 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 low rate uh, yeah. camera bug. We're still trying to figure out repros on that. So if you have that happen and you know what you did, please let us know. Seems like it's yeah. maybe related to picking stuff up. Yeah, I know people often don't like to be like negative to small devs. You're not being negative to us when you when you help that. It's being you know you're helping you're helping us go forward. Like constructive feedback is always welcome. Hey, I played this. Like your feelings are always valid. I didn't like this because of this. I yes. think I would like this better if it did this. These are great ways to give feedback. If you just say, "Hey, this sucks. I hope you guys die in a fire." That's not super constructive and doesn't really help anybody. And and you know, we we don't appreciate that kind of feedback really. Well, but also like, you know, I think that it was interesting as somebody had done a post of like, "Oh man, the flasher uh, oh, I hate that thing. It's driving me nuts." And then the entire thread is people talking about how much they love the flasher. And so sometimes, you know, when I encourage people to mail me, you can mail me directly. Um but really posting it helps because then you these conversations kick off that go way more in depth and you get this more rounded feedback around. It. And that's why we often like to share it because something I say excessively probably to the team is uh, we're always smarter as a group than a single person. So always raise up the thing you're thinking about to the entire group or into this place, the entire player base so that we can get more information and get smarter about it. Um, so you know, as players, you're all making us smarter. And that's why we released it in early access. That's why we appreciate your feedback. That's why we appreciate you playing. Uh, and, you know, for that end, we are working hard on our side to get you a bunch of updates, including new content, including mods support uh, getting out there. Well, we, while we have a base mod support now, we have to get it so that the masses can start creating the campaigns. We have some episodes we want to get out to you that the modders have made. Like, there's just a ton of stuff coming we're super excited and we cannot believe we've gotten this many players already in the first two weeks. So um, really just come on and join us. And uh, yeah, it's just been fun. It's just been yeah, so much fun. Please, but please let us know. I, like, I love, I love those posts that are like, Hey, here, are, here I'm reading. I'm like, Oh man, this person hates the game. And I get to the end. Like game is awesome. I love it. Just thank you so much for doing this. Those, those are always lovely to read. So um and we're and we're, we're we are literally reading everything. So we're reading everything on the Discord, on the Steam boards, wherever you're posting. We're we're probably finding you and tracking you down and reading yes. reading what you've written. Yeah. Um, so thank you for all the feedback. We yeah. And it. And, uh, and we're working on stuff for the Flasher for photosensitive people because that is a definite concern. It's, it's yes, that is that is fair feedback. Yes. Yeah. No no ETA yet, but it's it's it is something we're concerned about and are working on. So and so for that end, uh, you can give us feedback at discord.gg slash stray bombay. If you're uncomfortable with that, you can email me directly at chet c h e t at stray mm -hmm. That's it. Uh so next update. Big stuff coming in the next update. So um so that's what we got coming. Uh, always working more. Uh, I think after this next hot fix, we'll probably be on try to get on on the twice a month, every other week kind of update train, um, where we have it. Hopefully, is the goal is to have one big update a month and one kind of one one small update, one big update a month. Um, and we're just excited to keep playing the game with y'all and watch people play and and and, yeah, and, and thank you for watching these and asking for these because I saw people asking and it's fun that yeah it's fun to do it's fun to hang out and talk with Will we'll also start including some more people yeah we, I know we keep saying that but everyone is so busy um and um yeah we will be doing more we will keep more of these and you can always give us feedback on which ones of these you would like to see as well so yeah. thank you uh okay thanks everybody see you all next time bye. <laughs>